Sahih Muslim The Book of Hunting, Slaughter, and What Animals May Be Eaten Chapter on Hunting with Trained Dogs and Arrows It was narrated that Adi bin Hatim said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, I release my trained dogs and they catch game for me. And I mentioned the name of Allah over them. He said, If you release your trained dog and you mention the name of Allah over him, then eat. I said, Even if the dogs kill the game. He said, even if they kill it, so long as another dog has not joined them? I said to him, and I shoot the game with the mirad, a short blunt arrow without fletching, and I hit it. He said, if you shoot the mirad, and it pierces the game, then eat it. But if it strikes it sideways, then do not eat it. Footnote The word mirad means a short, blunt, featherless arrow, or something that has a blade or point on one end or one side, while the other end of it, or side of it, is wooden. It was narrated that Adi bin Hatim said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, We are a people who hunt with these dogs. He said, If you release these trained dogs and mention the name of Allah over them, then eat what they catch for you, even if they kill it, unless the dog eats some of it. If he eats some of it, then do not eat of it, for I am afraid that he may have caught it for himself. And if other dogs join your dog, then do not eat the game. It was narrated that Adi bin Hatim said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about the mirad. He said, if its point strikes the game, then eat. But if its edge, that is, sideways, strikes it and kills it, then it has been beaten to death. So do not eat it. And I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about dogs. He said, if you release your dog and mention the name of Allah, then eat. But if he has eaten part of it, then do not eat, for he has caught it for himself. I said, what if I find another dog with my dog, and I do not know which of them caught it? He said, do not eat, for you mentioned the name of Allah over your dog, but you did not mention the name of Allah over any other. As Sharbi said, I heard Adi bin Hatim saying, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about the Mi'rat, and he mentioned a similar report as Hadith number 4974. Adi bin Hatim said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about the Mi'rat, and he mentioned a similar report as Hadith number 4974. It was narrated that Adi bin Hatim said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about hunting with the Mi'rat. He said, whatever is struck with its point, eat it. But whatever is struck with it sideways, do not eat it, for it has been beaten to death. And I asked him about hunting with dogs. He said, whatever it catches for you, and does not eat, then eat it. For its slaughtering is its being caught and killed by the dog. But if you find another dog with him and you fear that the other dog caught it with him and killed it, then do not eat, for you mention the name of Allah over your dog, not any other. Zakaria bin Abi Za'ida narrated it with this chain. As Sha'bi said, I heard Adi bin Hatim, who was our neighbor, partner and close associate, in an Naharain, say that he asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. I release my dog and I find another dog has caught the game with my dog, and I do not know which of them caught it and killed it first. He said, Do not eat, for you only mention the name of Allah over your dog, not any other. A similar report as Hadith number 4979 was narrated from Adi bin Hatim, from the Prophet peace be upon him. It was narrated that Adi bin Hatim said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said to me, If you release your dog and mention the name of Allah, if he catches something for you and you find it alive, then slaughter it. If you find he has killed it but has not eaten any of it, then eat it. If you find another dog with your dog and it the game has been killed, then do not eat, for you do not know which of them killed it. If you shoot your arrow and mention the name of Allah, then the game vanishes from your sight for a day, and you only find the mark of your arrow on it. Then eat if you wish, but if you find it drowned in water, then do not eat it. 
It was narrated that Adi bin Hatim said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about hunting. He said, when you shoot your arrow, mention the name of Allah. Then if you find it, the game, dead, then eat, unless you find that it has fallen into water, in which case you cannot know whether it was water that killed it or your arrow. Abu Tha'lab al-Khushani said, I came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, we are in the land of some of the people of the book, and we eat from their vessels. And it is a land where I hunt with my bow and with my trained dog, or my dog that is not trained. Tell me what is permissible for us of that. He, peace be upon him, said, As for what you have mentioned about being in a land of some of the people of the book and eating from their vessels, if you can find vessels other than theirs, then do not eat from their vessels. But if you cannot, then wash them, then eat from them. As for what you have mentioned about being in a hunting land, whatever you catch with your bow, mention the name of Allah, then eat. And whatever you catch with your trained dog, mention the name of Allah, then eat. But whatever you catch with your dog that is not trained, if you come to it when it is still alive, and slaughter it, then eat it. A hadith like that of Ibn al-Mubarak, as hadith number 4983 was narrated from Haywa with this chain of narration, except that the hadith of Ibn Wahab does not mention hunting with the bow. Chapter on if the game disappears, then is found afterwards. It was narrated from Abu Ta'laba that the Prophet peace be upon him said, If you shoot your arrow and the game disappears, then you find it, then eat it, so long as it has not turned rotten. It was narrated from Abu Ta'laba, from the Prophet peace be upon him concerning the one who catches up with his game after three days. He, peace be upon him, said, Eat it so long as it has not turned rotten. A hadith like that of Al-A'la was narrated from Abu Ta'laba al-Khushani, except that he did not mention it turning rotten, and he said concerning dogs, Eat it after three days unless it has turned rotten, in which case, leave it. Chapter on the Prohibition of Eating Any Wild Animal with Fangs and Any Bird with Talons It was narrated that Abu Thalaba said, The Prophet peace be upon him forbade eating any wild animal with fangs. Ishaq and Ibn Abi Omar added in their hadith, Az-Zuhri said, We did not hear this until we came to Asham. It was narrated from Abu Idris al-Khawlani that he heard Abu Thalib al-Khushani say, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade eating any wild animal with fangs. Ibn Shihab said, I did not hear that from our scholars in the Hijaz until Abu Idris, who was one of the Fuqaha, scholar of Asham, narrated it to me. It was narrated from Abu Ta'lab al-Khushani that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade eating any wild animal with fangs. A hadith like that of Yunus and Amr was narrated from Az-Zuhri with this chain of narration. All the narrators mentioned eating except Saleh and Yusuf, in whose hadith it says, he forbade every wild animal that has fangs. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace be upon him said, every wild animal that has fangs, eating it is haram, forbidden. Malik bin Anas narrated a similar report as hadith number 4992 with this chain of narrators. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade eating every wild animal with fangs and every bird with talons. Shuba said a similar report with this chain of narrators as hadith number 4994. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade every wild animal that has fangs and every bird that has talons. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade a hadith like that of Shuba from Al-Hakam. Chapter on Permissibility of Eating Dead Animals from the Sea It was narrated that Jabir said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent us on an expedition and appointed Abu Ubaidah in charge of us to intercept a caravan of the Quraysh. He supplied us with a bag of dates and we had no other provisions apart from that. Abu Ubaidah used to give them to us, one date at a time. He, the narrator, said, I said, what did you do with it? He said, we used to suck it like a child, then drink water after that, and it would suffice us for the day until night. 
and we used to knock down leaves with our sticks, then soak them in water and eat them. We set off along the coast and there appeared before us on the shore something like a huge mound. We came to it and saw it that it was a beast called Al-Anbar, sperm whale. Abu Ubaidah said, it is dead meat. Then he said, no, we are the envoys of the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, striving in the cause of Allah, and we are compelled by hunger, eat. We lived on it for a month, 300 of us until we grew fat. And I remember that we extracted pictures of fat from its eye socket and we cut out pieces of meat like that of a bull. Abu Ubaidah called out 13 of us and made them sit in its eye socket. And he took one of its ribs and set it up. Then he saddled the largest camel we had with us and passed beneath it. And we supplied ourselves with preserved pieces of its meat. When we reached al Medina, we came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and told him all of that. He said, it is provision that Allah brought forth for you. Do you have any of its meat with you that you can give us to eat? We sent some of it to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he ate it. Amr heard Jabir ibn Abdullah say, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent us 300 riders, with Abu Ubaidah bin al jara in charge to keep a lookout for the caravan of the Quraysh. We stayed on the coast for half a month. And we were stricken with such intense hunger that we ate leaves, and it was called the army of leaves. Then the sea threw out to us a beast called Al-Anbar, sperm whale, and we ate from it for half a month and rubbed its fat on our bodies, until our bodies grew strong. Abu Ubaidah took one of its ribs and set it up. Then he looked for the tallest man in the army and the tallest camel. He mounted the man on the camel and he passed beneath it, and a number of men sat in its eye socket and we extracted such and such number of pictures of fat from its eye socket. Abu Ubaidah used to give each one of us a handful of dates at a time. Then he gave us one date at a time, and when he ran out, we felt its loss. Amr heard Jabir say concerning the army of the leaves, a man slaughtered three camels, then another three, then another three, then Abu Ubaidah forbade him to do that. It was narrated that Jabir ibn Abdullah said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, sent us 300 men, and we carried our provisions slung around our necks. Jabir ibn Abdullah narrated, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent an expedition 300 strong and appointed Abu Ubaidah bin al jarrah in charge of them. Their provisions ran short, so Abu Ubaidah collected their provisions in a bag and fed us from it each day until the ration was reduced to one date each every day. Jabir ibn Abdullah said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent an expedition, of whom I was one, to the coast. And they, the narrators, all coded a hadith like that of Amr bin Dinar and Abu Az-Zubair, except that in the hadith of Wahab bin Qaysan, as hadith number 5002, it says, The army ate from it for 18 days. It was narrated that Jabir bin Abdullah said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent an expedition to the land of Juhayna and appointed a man in charge of them. And he quoted a similar hadith as hadith number 5003. Chapter on the Prohibition of Eating the Meat of Domesticated Donkeys It was narrated from Ali bin Abi Talib that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade muta, marriage with women on the day of Khaybar, and he forbade the meat of domesticated donkeys. It was narrated from a zuhri with this chain of narrators. In the hadith of Yunus, it says, and eating the meat of domesticated donkeys. It was narrated from Ibn Shihab that Abu Idris told him that Abu Ta'laba said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prohibited the meat of domesticated donkeys. It was narrated from Ibn Omar that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade eating the meat of domesticated donkeys. It was narrated that Ibn Omar said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade eating domesticated donkeys on the day of Khaybar, although the people needed it. It was narrated that Ash Shaybani said, I asked Abdullah bin Abi Awfa about the meat of domesticated donkeys. He said, We were stricken with hunger on the day of Khaybar, when we were with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and the people had captured some donkeys outside Al Medina, so we slaughtered them and the cooking pots were boiling, when the caller of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cried out that the cooking pots should be overturned and nothing of the donkey meat should be eaten 
I said, what kind of prohibition was it? He said, we talked about that amongst ourselves. Did he, peace be upon him, prohibit it forever, or did he prohibit it because it had not been distributed, as it should have been, that is, with the khamas being taken out before the booty was divided? Suleyman al-Shaybani said, I heard Abdullah bin Abi Awfa say, on the day of Khaybar, we fell upon some domesticated donkeys and slaughtered them. When the cooking pots were boiling, the caller of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cried out, saying, Overturn the cooking pots and do not eat any of the donkey meat. Some people said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, has only forbidden it because it has not been distributed as it should have been, that is, with the khamas being taken out before the booty was divided. And others said, He has forbidden it forever. It was narrated that Adi bin Thabit said, I heard Al-Bara and Abdullah bin Abi Awfa say, We got some donkeys and cooked them. Then the caller of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cried out saying, Overturn the cooking pots. It was narrated that Abu Ishaq said, Al-Bara said, On the day of Khaybar we got some donkeys. Then the caller of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cried out saying, Overturn the cooking pots. It was narrated that Thabit bin Ubaidullah said, I heard Al-Bara saying, We were forbidden the meat of domesticated donkeys. It was narrated that Al-Bara bin Azib said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, commanded us to throw away the meat of domesticated donkeys, raw and cooked. Then he did not command us to eat it. A similar report, as Hadith number 5015, was narrated from Asim, with this chain narrators. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, I do not know whether the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade it because they, donkeys, were beasts of burden for the people, and he did not want their beasts of burden to be lost, or if he prohibited the meat of domesticated donkeys on the day of Khaybar. It was narrated that Salama bin al-Aqwa said, We set out with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, for Khaybar. Then Allah granted them victory over it. When evening came on the day that they conquered it, the people lit many fires, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, What are these fires? What are you lighting them for? They said, For cooking meat. He said, What kind of meat? They said, For the meat of domesticated donkeys. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Throw it away and break them, the pots. A man said, O Messenger of Allah, or throw it away and wash them. He said, Or that. It was narrated from Yazid bin Abi Ubaid with this chain narrators. It was narrated that Anas said, When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, conquered Khaybar, we captured some donkeys outside the town and we cooked some of them. Then the caller of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cried out saying, Allah and his Messenger have forbidden it to you, for it is an abomination of the shaitan's handiwork. So the pots and their contents were overturned and they were brimming with their contents. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, on the day of Khaybar, someone came and said, O Messenger of Allah, the donkeys have been eaten. Then another person came and said, O Messenger of Allah, the donkeys are finished. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, told Abu Talha to call out, Allah and his Messenger forbid the meat of donkeys to you, for it is an abomination or it is impure. So the cooking pots were overturned with their contents. Chapter on Permissibility of Eating Horse Meat it was narrated from Jabir bin Abdullah that on the day of Khaybar, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade the meat of domesticated donkeys, but he permitted the meat of horses. Jabir bin Abdullah said, At the time of Khaybar, we ate the meat of horses and onagers, but the Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade us to eat the meat of domestic donkeys. Footnote, onagers is a type of wild donkey. It was narrated from Ibn Juraj with this chain narrators, a hadith similar to hadith number 5023. It was narrated that Asma said, We slaughtered a horse at the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and ate it. It was narrated from Hisham, with this chain narrators, a hadith similar to hadith number 5025. Chapter on the permissibility of eating a dab, mastigure. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Dinar, that he heard Ibn Omar said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about Ad-Dab, Mastigur, Desert Lizard. He said, I will not eat it, but I will not prohibit it. Footnote, Ad-Dab, Mastigur, is a type of lizard, Uromastix, that grows up to one or two feet in length. 
It was narrated that Ibn Omar said, A man asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about eating a dhab, mastigur, desert lizard. And he said, I do not eat it, but I do not prohibit it. It was narrated that Ibn Omar said, A man asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about eating a dhab, mastigur, desert lizard, when he was on the pulpit. He said, I do not eat it, but I do not prohibit it. A similar report, as hadith number 5029, was narrated from Ubaidullah with this chain narrators. A hadith like that of Alayth from Nafi, as hadith number 5029, was narrated from Nafi, from Ibn Omar, from the Prophet peace be upon him, except that the hadith of Ayyub says, A mastigur was brought to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, and he did not eat it, but he did not prohibit it. In the hadith of Osama, it says a man stood up in the masjid when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was on the pulpit. A shabi heard Ibn Omar say that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had some of his companions with him, among who was Sa'ad. Some mastigur meat was brought to them, and one of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, called out, It is mastigur meat. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Eat, for it is halal, but it is not something that I eat. It was narrated that Tawba al-Anbari said, A shabi said to me, Have you heard the hadith of al-Hasan from the Prophet? I sat with Ibn Omar for nearly two years or a year and a half, and I did not hear him narrate anything from the Prophet peace be upon him except this. He said some of the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him among whom was Sa'ad, a hadith like that of Mu'ad, as hadith number 5032. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Abbas said, Khalid bin al-Walid and I, along with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, entered the house of Maymuna. A roasted mastigur was brought and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stretched out his hand. Then one of the women who were in the house of Maymuna said, Tell the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, what he is about to eat. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, withdrew his hand. I said, Is it haram, O Messenger of Allah? He said, No, but it is not found in the land of my people and I have an aversion to it. Khalid said, I took in and ate it, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was looking on. It was narrated from Abu Umama bin Sahl bin Hunayf al-Ansari that Abdullah bin Abbas told him that Khalid bin al-Walid, who was called Saifullah, the Sword of Allah, told him that he entered along with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, upon Maymuna, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who was his maternal aunt and the maternal aunt of Ibn Abbas. He found in her house a roasted mastigur, which had been brought by her sister Hufayda bin al-Harith from Najd. It was rare that food would be offered to him without being described or named. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stretched out his hand towards it. And one of the women present said, Tell the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, what is being offered to him. They said, It is a mastigur, O Messenger of Allah. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, withdrew his hand. And Khalid bin al-Walid said, Is mastigur haram, O Messenger of Allah? He said, No but it is not found in the land of my people, and I have an aversion to it. Khalid said, I took it and ate it, while the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was looking on, and he did not forbid me. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that Khalid bin al-Walid told him that he entered with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, upon Maymuna bint al-Harith, who was his maternal aunt. Some mastigur meat was brought to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, which had been brought by Um Hufayd bint al-Harith from Najd who was married to a man from Banu Jafar. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would not eat anything until he knew what it was. Then he mentioned a hadith like that of Yunus, as hadith number 5035, and at the end of the hadith he added, Ibn al-Assam narrated it from Maymuna, and he was under her care. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, Two grilled mastigurs were brought to the Prophet, peace be upon him, when we were in the house of Maymuna. A similar hadith, as hadith number 5036, but he did not mention Yazid bin al-Assam from Maymuna. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, some mastigur meat was brought to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, when he was in the house of Maymuna, and Khalid bin al-Walid was with him, and he mentioned a hadith like that of Az-Zuhri. Ibn Abbas said, My maternal aunt, Um Hufayd, gave a gift to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, of some ghee, dried yogurt, and mastigures. 
He ate some of the ghee and dried yogurt, but he left the mastigure, having an aversion to it. It was eaten at the table of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and if it were haram, it would not have been eaten at the table of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. It was narrated that Yazid bin al assam said, A newly married man in al Medina invited us to a meal, and he served us thirteen mastigures. Some people ate and some did not. I met Ibn Abbas the next day and told him about that. People started narrating what they heard about this issue, until one of them said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, I do not eat it, but I do not forbid it, and I do not prohibit it. Ibn Abbas said, What a bad thing you have said. No Prophet of Allah was sent except to explain what is permitted and what is forbidden. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was in the house of Mamuna, along with Al-Fadl ibn Abbas, Khalid bin Al-Walid, and another woman, a tray of meat was brought to them. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, wanted to eat, Mamuna said to him, It is mastigure meat. He withdrew his hand and said, This is meat which I have never eaten. And he said to them, Eat. So Al-Fadl, Khalid, and the woman ate from it. Mamuna said, I will never eat something that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did not eat. Jabir bin Abdullah said, A mastigure was brought to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he refused to eat it. He said, I do not know. Perhaps it is descended from one of the generations who were transformed. It was narrated that Abu al-Zubair said, I asked Jabir about mastigure. He said, do not eat it. And he regarded it as repulsive. He said, Omar bin al-Khattab said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not prohibit it, and Allah has benefited more than one person by it. It is the food of most shepherds, and if I had some with me, I would eat it. It was narrated that Abu Sa'id said, A man said, O Messenger of Allah, we live in a land that abounds in mastigures. What do you command us to do? Or what is your ruling to us? He said, I have been told that a group of the children of Israel was transformed and he did not command or forbid. Abu Sa'id said, After that, Omar said, Allah, glorified and exalted as he, has benefited more than one person by it, and it is the food of most shepherds. If I had some with me, I would eat it. It was just that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, had an aversion to it. It was narrated from Abu Sa'id that a Bedouin came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, I live in a low land that abounds in mastigures, and they are the main food of my people. He, peace be upon him, did not answer him. And we said, Ask him again. He asked him again and he did not answer him three times. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, called out to him the third time and said, O Bedouin, Allah cursed or became angry with the tribe of the children of Israel, and he transformed them into animals that move on the earth. And I do not know. Perhaps these are descended from them, so I do not eat it, but I do not forbid it. Chapter on the Permissibility of Eating Locusts it was narrated that Abdullah bin Abi Alfa said, We went on seven campaigns with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, during which we ate locusts. It was narrated that Abu Ya'far, with this chain of narrators, a similar hadith as hadith number 5045, Abu Bakr said in his report, Seven campaigns. Ishaq said, Six. Ibn Abi Omar said, Six or seven. It was narrated from Abu Ya'fur with this chain of narrators, and he said, Seven Campaigns. Chapter on the Permissibility of Eating Rabbit It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, We passed by and chased a rabbit in Mara Zahran. They ran after it, but got tired. Then I ran and caught it. I brought it to Abu Talha, who slaughtered it, and he sent its haunch and two hind legs to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. I brought it to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he accepted it. It was narrated from Shubar with this chain, a similar hadith as hadith number 5048. In the hadith of Yahya, it says, its haunch or its hind legs. Chapter on the permissibility of using things that help in hunting and pursuing the enemy, but throwing small pebbles is disliked. It was narrated that Ibn Abu Raida said, Abdullah bin al mughaffal saw one of his companions throwing small pebbles and he said to him, Do not throw small pebbles for the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, disliked or forbade the throwing of small pebbles for no game is caught thereby and no enemy is defeated. It just breaks a tooth or puts out an eye. Then he saw him throwing small pebbles again after that and he said to him, I tell you that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to dislike or forbid the throwing of small pebbles. Then I see you throwing small pebbles? 
I will never speak to you again. Uthman bin Omar narrated, Gahmas narrated a similar report as Hadith number 5050 with this chain of narrators. It was narrated that Abdullah bin al mughaffal said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade the throwing of small pebbles. Ibn Jafar said in his Hadith, It does not kill or hurt the enemy or kill the game. Rather, it breaks a tooth or puts out an eye. Ibn Mahdi said, It does not defeat the enemy. And he did not say, It puts out an eye. It was narrated from Sayyid bin al-Jubair that a relative of Abdullah bin al mughaffal threw small pebbles and he told him not to do that. He said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade the throwing of small pebbles and said, It does not kill the game or kill or hurt the enemy. Rather, it breaks a tooth or puts out an eye. Then he did it again and he said, I told you that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade it. Then you throw small pebbles again? I will never speak to you. A similar report, as Hadith number 5053, was narrated from Ayyub with this chain of narrators. Chapter on the command to be proficient in slaughtering and killing and to sharpen the blade. It was narrated that Shadad bin Aus said, There are two things that I memorized from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. He, peace be upon him, said, Allah has prescribed proficiency in all things. So if you kill, kill well. And if you slaughter, slaughter well. Let one of you sharpen his blade and spare suffering to the animal he slaughters. It was narrated from Khalid al hada with the chain of narrators and meaning of the hadith of Ibn Ulayya as hadith number 5055. Chapter on the prohibition of cornering animals in order to kill them for sport. Hisham bin Zaid bin Anas bin Malik said, I entered the house of Al-Hakam bin Ayyub along with my grandfather Anas bin Malik and there were some people who had made a hen a target and were shooting arrows at her. Anas said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him forbade taking animals as targets. It was narrated from Shuba with this chain of narrators, a similar hadith as hadith number 5057. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet peace be upon him said, Do not take any living being as a target. A similar report as hadith number 5059 was narrated from Shuba with this chain of narrators. It was narrated that Sayyid bin Jubair said, Ibn Umar passed by a group of people who had taken a hen as a target and were shooting at her. When they saw Ibn Umar, they scattered. And Ibn Umar said, Who did this? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cursed the one who does this. It was narrated that Sayyid bin Jubair said, Ibn Umar passed by some young men of Quraysh who had taken a bird as a target and were shooting at it and they had agreed to give every arrow that missed to the owner of the bird. When they saw Ibn Umar, they scattered. Ibn Umar said, Who did this? May Allah curse the one who did this. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, cursed the one who takes any living being as a target. Jabir bin Abdullah said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade capturing any animal for the purpose of killing it, for sport.